Yeah, so so like I said, um, calling to give you just the courtesy of a heads up that you'll, you will receive a letter kind of early next week letting you know that the bank decided to end their banking relationship with you. Um, the bank determined that this relationship is outside of its risk appetite. So um, typically we don't uh, call customers in, in these situations, but I recognize you've been a long time client of the bank, so wanted wanted to call to give you the courtesy of the heads up. <clears throat> Ladies and gents, this is a call that was uh, recorded just before the weekend this uh, past week. And uh, that's Scotiabank, um, a a well-known bank in this country, calling uh, an individual named Jeremy McKenzie to cancel their relationship together. And they're essentially taking a political stance on this one. Uh, we haven't heard much of people in uh, in media having their uh, bank accounts being removed from them. Uh, but this is this is a new concept that we're seeing here in this, uh, well, what's been known as, a, <laughs> what's been seen as a banana republic here in Canada as of late. And to talk about this, I brought in none other than the man himself, Jeremy McKenzie, to talk about this story. Jeremy, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Hey, Clyde. How you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm doing a lot better than you are at the moment. Let's just say <laughs> that. You you don't know that for sure. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that for sure. I don't know how long I'll be doing uh, better than exactly. you in the moment. And that's kind of where, that's where I'm at here. Change. Now, there, there's a number of things that have been going on recently. Like we... <laughs> What what happened to you? Uh, was this on Friday or Thursday that this? Uh, Friday afternoon, right around four o'clock. So right at the right at the end of the work day, work week. So just to make sure I couldn't talk to anyone, you know. Right. Well, we'll call them at four o'clock on Friday, and then I'll have to stew on it till Monday at least. And I've seen this in the news news industry because they they'll want to like what news what politicians will want to do is they'll bring news at late at Friday so that. Everybody yeah. freaks out about it over the weekend where nobody really gets to hear yeah. it. And I was like, nope, I'm bringing Jeremy on on Monday because I want to I want to bring this one out there and I want this to get as much reach as possible. In recent times, we've seen um, w- the weaponization of institutions in this country. We have Jordan Peterson. He has uh, because of political things that he said on the Internet, uh, the College of Psychologists is going after him for his license. They want to take away his license to be a clinical psychologist. And now you, they're doing what what seems to be a tactic from the Chinese Communist Party or uh, some banana republic country where they don't uh, tell me. Tell me if I'm reading this wrong. Is there any other way to read this where this isn't a political move? I wasn't given a reason. I wasn't given any specific, uh, you know, something that would make sense. It's not like I, I went into the branch and, you know, jumped across the counter and, you know, beat up some tellers or something like that, or or there was any kind of altercation. There's no real clear, obvious reason. I mean, I've, had, I've been at this bank for 30 years, about 30 years, since about 1994, so 28 years, something like that, since I was a kid. Uh, mortgages through there, a couple of homes over the years, cars, all kinds of things. Uh, my entire life, I've never had an issue. Um, the last time I was even physically in one of these banks was to just wire my life savings to my lawyer. Um, there has never been any indication there's a problem ever. And then they just kind of called me. I knew it was a problem. I knew there was this was going to be serious because when the guy, I picked up the phone on Friday afternoon and it was from Scotiabank and it was a white guy on the phone. So that someone actually took the time to, you know, this is going to be a serious call. It, was, it wasn't somebody c- c- trying to call and sell me a credit card. I knew that was what that was for sure. So I had to go record it. And that, the rest of it is what you you hear on the the video there so you're not you're no stranger to controversy you're no stranger to getting in trouble even you were <laughs> you were just in jail you were you yeah. were released we, we we saw the footage during the uh inquiry to the the use of the emergencies act where you you were called on to testify and they had you in, in a what looked like a a small little cell uh yeah that's the that's the video court cell that's the video court cell. Okay, I, I'm not familiar, familiar with the inside of a, of a jail. Sorry. Nor should you be. Oh yeah. no, no. But uh, well, I'm kind of worried. You know. Uh, Let's e- hope that we keep it that way. Yeah. Well, even associating with people these days seems to be uh, a well a quasi criminal offense, or if not uh, something that could get one you canceled uh, out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it seems that they're getting more and more desperate for this. So. 
that you had been canceled. You, it's not that you yeah. have, um, you <laughs> like I said, you're no stranger to controversy. You're, well, and, you're famous for your, the... your, your country that you made up. The, the famous yeah. country well, that infamous country that's uh, run by a, a time traveling goat. I, I hear uh, what's this? What's the lore? Yeah, this is the president. This is this is him here. Well, he's he's more of a power behind the throne. I'm just the figurehead. He's like the Dick Cheney character. He's pulling all the strings, really. Right. Um, I'm just I'm just the punching bag that everybody likes to to beat up on. And that's you know, that's the trouble begins. when you start opening your mouth about powerful people and things that uh, are going on that they don't like it. You know, started with the, you know, Omar Cotter, the deal that he got, and not even so much. It was about him. It was the way that the government and the people and the, the university and so on reacted about how much of a hero he is. While the same week, we left two hundred million dollars on the table for veterans programs, and we just went, ah, well, like, what kind of country are we in? Like, what is happening? That, that's, and then I'm criticizing the RCMP and the Porta Peak massacre. It's another video that has you know millions of views that went around, and they didn't like that either. And in 2020, 2021. Uh, different almost five different police forces put me on a on a watch list as some kind of person of interest i've got published photos and stuff about that and they were investigating my ideology this is over this is a year before i was ever arrested nothing like that they just they uh, there's an old saying i guess the fastest way i can sum this up is uh in the east germ in east germany the stasi would say show me the man and i'll show you the crime right Meaning, but you've not been convicted you know? of any of these crimes no i've never been arrested in my life until this year and i think this is like three or four times now Right, right, and it's it's all it, it all seems to be coalescing around the, the 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 time when a lot of Canadians are are getting upset and standing up, not just not just a fringe group or uh, just a small mm -hmm. uh, echo chamber have or what have you. They would want to let you believe yeah. this to be the case, but you've been effective, and I think that's why that's why you're you have a target on your back is because. You've actually woken up a lot of people to a lot of issues. Now they've used you as a, a bit of a scapegoat, a scape, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, goat, uh, <laughs> if you would. Yeah. Um, so during the use of the Emergencies Act, they they used uh, the fictional country that you made up uh, as a way to declare anybody who speaks up against the government as being a dangerous, yeah. um, whatever they want to call them, insurrectionist, whatever yeah. uh, language that they want to use. Yeah, but what what what's really got me troubled here is uh, the fact that you, I mean, it's it's amazing that you're so slippery and they they haven't been able to touch you. They demonetized you, but you've still been able. When you're to... innocent, well, it's, right. that's when true. You're stub when you're when you're a stubborn innocent Scott, it, yeah, you know we're we're like cockroaches. We're hard to kill. It's hard to get rid of these. Guys like this. <laughs> you and me both. You and me both. That same lineage. <laughs> so, but. Uh, well, what I was getting to there is you've been slippery and, and you've, you've found good ways of having a, an ability to still maintain uh, a presence and uh, be able to earn money in this, uh, yeah. in this space. But yet th it seems that that's what's causing them to, to escalate yeah. this whole situation. And yeah, they're, they're moving now well, they, to institutions. Yeah, they, well, they started with this is the pattern. They start with you. They identify someone who they don't like and that starts now the hit pieces and the the like the rumor, the, the the whisper campaigns begin and you mm -hmm. have these, you know, articles and all this stuff to try and intimidate you into shutting up. And it is effective a lot of the time. But I spent 14 and a half years in the military at some of the you know higher ends of of, of, the, of that institution where it was giving up and quitting is, is a cardinals that you just you don't even think it doesn't even cross your mind. You don't do it. Mm -hmm. um, so when you present it with an obstacle, it's just, well, now I've just figured figure out a way around this. And how do I, you know, move forward and continue? Because it's just. They start with the the articles and stuff. I don't care. If that doesn't work. Well, then we'll go. Then we'll go bigger. We'll we'll give you some some more attention. Now you're on CBC and mm, doesn't work. All right, send the police. Let's start putting them in jail. Doesn't work. Take the bank account. Make it impossible for you to live. Let's make it so you can't buy groceries. And you know when you really think about this, and I'm not going to be able to go to RBC or CIBC. The same the same thing's going to affect. How do I buy groceries? Everybody takes credit cards cards now, so you can't mm -hmm. have one of those because the bank issue issue those a lot of the time. Um, how, you know, how do you get gas for, for, I mean, how do you, how do I get my military pension? I don't have a bank account. Are they going to mail me cash in the mail? And then how do I pay for my house? Do I get this cash? Do I, do I got to get on my bicycle and pedal to Ottawa to give it to the bank to make a mortgage payment? I don't know. And they don't know. And they don't care either. This is just figure it out. And I'm not the first person this has happened to either. This has been happening for a while, for years now. Um, I might be one of the, the first more higher profile situations of this happening in Canada. But I'm certainly not the first, and I'm not the only one at all, and I'm definitely not going to be the last one. This has been happening in the States for a while, mm -hmm. and using this as a weapon to to try and 
just stifle, suppress, and, and destroy opposition because it's really hard to operate and do anything if you don't have a bank account. Like it's going to be a pain in the ass. After I've been banned from Facebook, YouTube four or five times, Twitter for life forever. I can never you know go back to that. Uh, D Live has banned me. I've I've been banned from everything that exists pretty much. So it, it forces an alternative economy to exist. And that's where all these ex other platforms are coming up. You have like entropy and rumble exists now. And you've got like Andrew Torba's making gab and stuff. If it wasn't for this censorship campaign or the, or this, this mob, that's like, we're just going to crush everything we don't like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it wasn't for that. None of these would exist because there's no need, but there is. And, and that's what happens. So people are just going to continue. And now I'm, I'm just going to find an alternate, you know, means to, to live as I always do. And then I'm going to go back and teach my audience how to do the exact same thing. Well, yeah, this is actually just going to be a learning lesson for everybody on how to get yeah, around, I'm to glad, around it. I'm glad it's happening now and not, you know, five years from now when it's like much harder to, you know, when you're the first, when you're one of the first people thrown to the wolves, you know, you have time to figure it out, but they're going to narrow down their tactics as time goes on. So it's going to get more and more difficult to evade these kinds of things as time goes on. So you were getting into the fact that you, you, you think that likely you won't be able to go to RDVC, TD or any of these I'm other not institutions. Risk it. Uh, yeah. What about uh, credit unions? Because I know a lot of people are mentioning this uh, in the comments yeah. when I was discussing this on the Friday night live stream saying go to go to a credit union. You should be good there. Um, now, we'll see. Well, I mean, we'll see. That, that's that's where we are. Try. But so what, what do you what are your options now with your bank? Uh, they gave you 30 days to pull all your funds or I, I'm assuming they confiscate or just relinquish them somehow. I, I don't know what hap what would happen if I, they didn't. For from what I understand is you have 30 days from whenever this letter arrives. So probably tomorrow or, or Tuesday or whenever they issue something like that. 30 days to like, that's, it's like a warning. It's like after this time expires, your bank account is closed and it's it. Mm -hmm. So if you leave money in there at the end of 30 days, I'm sure there's some kind of clause that says it's mine now. I don't know. So, it, but yeah, basically you have 30 days to get your, get your stuff out of the office and go home. You know, at the end of the video, and I recommend everybody go uh, check it out. It's on Greg Wycliffe's channel on YouTube. The link is going to be in the description down below. You can listen to the whole audio of it. And he talks about uh, the, the fact that you have a mortgage with them and you, that, that, that'll still be in, in place until it, the end of its term. Because I'm, I'm guessing they have a legal obligation to you to yeah. hold that um, until yeah. it matures. But then at which point, uh, where where do you stand with that? I don't know. Well, I don't know what happens then. You know, it expires in, you know, next, I think I have about two, a year and a half or something left, two years, maybe something like that. Uh, then I, I don't know. You'll have to find another creditor, another lender to pay, pay you uh, to to sort to, to square that away, I, I guess, or pay up the mortgage or I, I don't know. And then the but other that's question, why I brought it up because, well, then the other you know, question like, how is, do I, are they going to pay the mortgage? Are they going to allow you to pay it? Are they going to allow you, even if you're with a credit union or whatever, because they said that they're not going to do business with you anymore. Are they going to even accept payment from you or are they obligated to accept payment from you? I, this is, I, this, I'm so much things up in the air yeah, in, in yeah. what, what's actually legal about this. Yeah, well, who knows? And this is this is the current Canadian government, which doesn't seem to care very much for what's legal and what's not. They they you want to talk about somebody that's slippery? Everybody in Ottawa is as slippery as any snake has ever been. So Greasy, can, I think, is the word. There's always some kind of clause anything. or some kind of backdoor thing. And then they reintroduced or they put in legislation in the mid you know 2015 16 time. I remember I took my money out of the bank then because there was a bail in clause that people that should I've been talking about for years that people should be aware of. The bank can just the government can say ah we need your money and take it from you. That's legal now. Didn't used to be, but it is now. That's that's a bail-in clause that they put in there. And this is these quiet these things are quietly happening in the background when everyone's upset about Jordan Peterson's Twitter account or something. And meanwhile, they're you know making off with the gold or something. So I don't know what's I don't know. I'm I'm going to look into it. I'm going to gather information and find out if there's any legal you know options there. If there's anybody, because we'll find out you know as the documents come out and the in information comes out. Like who's whose call was this? They said it was head office. Well, who is that? That's I asked. Who exactly? Yeah, they won't exactly who them. told you that this was going to be done. I'm just going to go up the chain and find out whose decision this was and why it was. And if it's ridiculous, which I 50 50, it probably will be. Uh, I will see at that time what's what's going to happen then.
Well, because so you obviously have legal representation for other things that you have going on currently at the moment. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's it, but that's the other thing with lawyers is they that, like this is criminal defense lawyer. This is a civil litigator. Mm -hmm. This is a personal injury lawyer. This is a medical like there's whatever the situation is, there's a different lawyer for that thing. So you're going to have I think I have I have like five different legal contacts now. So, I'm, I'm basically a Russian mafia captain. <laughs> All these lawyers. <laughs> Well, I talked about that, I'm about banned. sanctioned individuals in Canada. We've been right. going on yeah. about that. Yeah, maybe uh, they thought that. Maybe it's, it's the Russian hat. Well, yeah, civil forfeiture is is one of the things that they've been they've been uh, pushing towards. And, and I've been warning because that this is the next thing. This is going to be uh, yeah. political dissidents. And, well, you're the raging dissident. Yeah. And they've been raging about you, that's for sure. Yeah. And they're, they're coming for yeah. you. Jeremy, where can people find you now? Um, well, ragingdistant.com is my website and all of my social media links are there, uh, Telegram, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. And, and that's, uh, you can even, all the links to the, the live shows I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday are there. 8 p.m. Eastern usually is, is when they're at. So all, all things uh, bad guy, that's where it is, ragingdistant.com. Perfect. I'll make sure I have the link in the description down below. I'm going to get you in for a long chat. We'll have you in for uh, a nice long podcast where we can get into all of this sure. stuff and not in just a 15 minute blurb. So thank you for yep. joining me today. Sure. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you guys uh, for tuning in and sharing these videos out. If you want to help out Jeremy, go to the link in the description down below where you can check out all the links to help him out, uh, to uh, view his content and uh, read his articles. But uh, other than that, we'll see you in the next one. Keep on trucking.